Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Show. I have here a Casio QD350 Quick Dialer 50. Fiddy, as we say on the streets. And it's got an interesting membrane keyboard here, which is really unresponsive and horrible. Um, but we nice to get it um, sort of working because this is the sort of thing where you could do the old tones, you know. If you remember the uh, movie Short Circuit, I think he escaped playing some tones, didn't he? Um, so yes, yeah, so we can emulate hopefully Short Circuit, Short Circuit. These big old roundy batteries, I think that's what they're called, the old roundy batteries. And I'm hoping they're the 2032s because these ones are quite fat. Um, and often, often times they require the thin ones, and I always have the fat ones. Um, could it be that simple? Could it just be a battery swap? It normally isn't. <gasps> da, 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 da. Oh, it was. No. Yes. No. I saw it flicker. You saw it flicker at home too. I'm sure if we did a swap, it would uh, be flickering. Right. So that's a good sign though, at least it did something. Again, even the reset button is bloody unresponsive. Everything and oh, it's on. Oh, I was gonna say the world's quickest back office video. Nah, it is a bit dicky. Let's just see if we can make it do something though before it kind of stays cocked up. Yeah, it's got issues. Right, let's get into the battery bay again. So there's definitely issues in this general region because I was sort of flexing it around. Always go for the simplest option. Let's use Occam's razor. It seems to be messing around when we're twiddling it. So let's first just start with some gentle bending of the battery tangs. You know when you've been tangoed. Very satisfying, the old bending of the battery tangs, isn't it? Less satisfying if they sort of just totally go kaput. So that's all good and that's all good. It'll all be good. I'm just going to kind of do a double handed maneuver now. This is what we call in the trade the. Uh, no, I don't, I don't. I don't have a. Even a jokey trade name for that could be. <laughs> oh, pucker. It's a problem, isn't it? I've bent them too much now. Which is making the uh, battery insertion a little bit of a trick here. It's going to try something thin. Well, I close be flap. Bugger. Over tensioned. Over tensioned it. Sorry, Billy, it's over tensioned, and I don't want to under tension it, so you're going to have to have this joy of getting the uh, batteries in every time you want to change them. Going to have to go in on the side. Sorry, boys and girls at home. But all I'm doing, all I'm doing is just moving one little bit of battery clip out of the way at the last nanosecond to allow that to sit in there. Oh, and it hasn't helped. If anything, it's worse. <laughs> Although, let's hit the old reset button. Maybe that's an essential part of this process. Oh, it does seem to need that. Ah, It's really... It's a really tricksy, this Obit. Okay, that wasn't a good enough fix either. I was really hoping to avoid the old uh, full teardown. But that's, uh, that's okay, I mean, it's kind of why we're here. So these are a Philips size, uh, 
kind of not quite the Phillips size of that screwdriver. Probably this size. Yes, indeedy. Tiny little ribbon holding that bottom keyboard on, and I'm kind of a little bit worried about that there could be a screw under this thing. So I'm being a bit ginger. Look in there. Let's just do the old is a screw in here test. Not in there. Could be one under this rubber. So we're going to just lift it gingerly. Probably stuck on. <laughs> not anymore. It's not. Nope. Nope. So that was a, a kind of annoying thing. We removed that for no good reason. So there doesn't seem to be a screw. Let's spludge then. Let's get on with it. Let's keep spludging. So many layers. So many layers of things to break. Ah, there is an alignment now. The case does seem to have been shifted up a bit. So maybe it's a kind of sliding mechanism. I've not seen one of those before. I feel there's, it's, it's like a, I think there's two layers actually. Let's see there. There's one spludge clip there, and if that this one is made in the same way, there'll be a spludge clip here. We can get into it. Yes, we did. And let's see if there's the same on this side. Ah! Woohoo! Very fine wires. There's a few very fine wires there, and it's coming from the volume control and the speaker, so. Just going to liberate a little bit of sticky tape. It's keeping those captive. There you go. There you go. So I think the main issue is there's a bit of funk on this component in here. You'll see just this it focuses a bit of crustiness here. But also there are these two tabs where the battery has to contact. So this one I'm not so worried about. No, that's interesting too in that that's the reset button. So it's all using this kind of carbon area technology there. So that one's going to need a clean up and I think these battery points here are pushing into that and they're very fine dot and they've kind of worn their way through. So I'm going to try to adjust the geometry of these by maybe putting a tiny bit of solder on them. And that's it really. I don't propose on doing anything else on this. I might just give this a little brush while the old soldering iron is heating up. I don't want to really adjust it, so I'm going to be very careful and keep it in alignment. But yeah, it cleaned up quite nicely. <laughs> that's all it took really. Everything else is looking pretty good. Some gentle rubbing on these carbon contacts. Feel a little bit greasy. Just give them a touch, a little buff. Got a bit of paper here. Interesting one though. The screen has got a nice metal can holding it in place. That's a very robust design. I wonder if that's something to do with it, you know, being forced next to that speaker to stop them interfering with each other. Right, soldering iron is now. Pretty warm. So I'm just going to touch a bit on here and a bit on here. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really messing with that. I'm just it's it's going to just change its shape slightly, and I might just for belt and braces bend them a little bit more, but not too much because then they'll be trying to dig straight in, and that's not going to help us at all. So there was some tape, if you recall, holding these wires in. I'm just going to leave that off. I don't think. It's a big deal, but we've just got to make sure using uh, 
screwdriver technologies there to make sure they don't get pinched under anything. And just check, they look kind of alright. If it shuts, it shuts basically. Um, that's all of the sort of shutty things. Probably put the uh, screws in first before the battery just because that bay looks like it relies on them. Give it its strength for that chassis. Be nice if this works. I mean, I'll have to put a little bit of glue on the uh, microphone uh, earpiece adapter there, but that's not a big deal. Let's get these batteries back in it. It looked like this had a nice little matrix screen on it too, so it's a little data bank phone number rememberer. I mean that would have been quite nice back in the back in there. You know, remember we were watching uh, Antiques Roadshow and last the summer wine still at this point. That's nicely crunched in. That went on right away and look, the flexing is not having any issues. So I think that's a good old fix. That's a proper job. Oh it did seem to go dim though as I, you know, sort of after I adjusted that. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but definitely not a hundred percent. Oh cool. Did you hear that? So you could make a little tune out of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there's, you can't get the nine in. Ready? Oh, it seems to be just remembering something I've done previously. It's interesting. It's got pauses and everything. I can see that it's got like it, it does the first bit and then you can push the second bit. Kappa next. There's even a lock on it, a key code lock. The matrix screen's working fine as well, that's nice. Good, it's a good little calculator. How about the old ABCs down here though? I'm gonna I'll try to see if there's a way I can test that one. Um, can we do it? No entry. So when I'm pushing it, the sort of letter buttons, it's saying no entry, but I guess that's because set data. You do yes. Oh yeah, there we go. I can enter a Y, I can enter a Z, U, P, not all of them. So you've got a few here like the A, B. If that's the case, it's probably suffering from the usual kind of matrixy issue and that could be why the old screen's flickering on there. Hmm, I think we'll revisit this one and have a go at that, but in the meantime, it does kind of work for dialing numbers, so keep on calculating!